Congratulations on the birth of your baby. Bringing a new baby into this world can be an exciting time. It can also be overwhelming because there is quite a bit to learn about caring for your baby as well as caring for yourself. At Central DuPage Hospital, we want this time to be as enjoyable as possible, so we have prepared this video with information about how to care for you and your baby after you get home from the hospital. This video is divided into two sections. The first half includes specific information about caring for your newborn. We'll talk about feeding, bathing, when to call your pediatrician, as well as other important topics. The second half will focus on how to take care of yourself during the postpartum period. We encourage you to watch this video as many times as you need. It will be played several times throughout your stay. On your day of discharge, your nurse will sit down with you and answer any additional questions you may have. At Central DuPage Hospital, our goal is to have you leave our hospital feeling comfortable caring for your baby. First, we are going to talk about one of the most important jobs that you have as a new parent, keeping your new baby healthy and free from infection. Your baby's immune system is not yet fully developed, and it is important that you and your baby avoid unnecessary contact with germs and viruses. We encourage you to ask friends and family members that have a cold or that are not feeling well to wait until they are healthy to visit your baby. It is also a good idea to ask children under the age of 12 not to visit while you are still in the hospital. Kids tend to carry illnesses from being in school and playgroups. Of course, this does not apply to the baby's brothers and sisters. We encourage them to visit, as this is an important time to bond with their new sibling, too. We encourage you to avoid taking your baby to crowded places, such as malls, restaurants, and grocery stores, for the first four to six weeks until your baby's immune system is built up more. Another way to protect your baby from infection is to practice good hand washing. Your beautiful new baby will naturally attract a lot of attention, and visitors will instinctively want to touch him on the hands or face. To be sure that germs are not transferred from their hands to your baby, ask everyone to please wash their hands before touching your baby. Carry hand sanitizer for times when a sink is not nearby. Children also love to touch babies. Encourage them to be part of the exciting event by asking them to touch your baby's foot, not your baby's hand, which will soon find its way into his mouth. Another way to help protect your baby from infection is to stay current with your immunizations. One important immunization is Tdap, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. You may not have heard of pertussis, but you have probably heard of its more common name, whooping cough. Tdap is an immunization that you probably received as a child, but the immunization is no longer effective now that you are an adult. Adults can pass whooping cough onto babies and children through what appears to be a simple cold. However, this same disease can be deadly in babies and small children. You can receive the Tdap immunization on your day of discharge if you have not had a tetanus shot in the past two years. Family members can receive Tdap from their physicians, the health department, and some pharmacies. Talk with your nurse if you are interested in receiving a Tdap before you leave the hospital. By taking these few precautions we discussed, you can help keep your baby healthy and free from infection. Many new parents find the idea of bathing their infant a nerve-wracking experience. All it takes is a little practice, and soon it will become an enjoyable experience for both of you. Give sponge baths for the first two weeks or until the cord falls off, and for boys, until the circumcision heals. This will help to assure proper healing. It is important to avoid getting your baby chilled, so be sure the room is warm and free of drafts. Also, keep your baby covered with washcloths, towels, or a light blanket, uncovering only the part of the body you are washing. The temperature of the water should be warm, not hot. Test the temperature of the water with your elbow or the inside of your wrist. We recommend that you set your home water heater temperature to 120 degrees Fahrenheit to avoid accidental scalding of your baby in the tub. 
you have probably already noticed that your newborn has not yet developed the muscle control to support herself, so it is very important that you always support her neck and head while you are bathing her. You should never take your hands off of her while she is in the water. When you bathe your baby, always start from the top and move down, washing the bottom last. Wash her face first, then the top of her body. Then wash her hands, legs, and feet. Wash her bottom last. Baby's skin tends to be dry, so you should only give your baby a bath two or three times per week and use minimal soap. Be sure to rinse her skin well, paying special attention to the hands and feet and creases and folds. You can, however, wash your baby's face at least once a day. When you clean her eyes, gently wipe from the inner eye to the outer using a soft washcloth with warm water. Do not use any soap because this will irritate her eyes. Never use cotton swabs or anything else to clean or probe the inside of your baby's ears. Nature has a way of getting rid of any excess wax. Because your baby's skin is naturally dry, you may want to use oils and lotions. We generally recommend that you do not use oils, but check with your baby's doctor regarding the use of lotions for dry skin and ointments for diaper rash. We also recommend that you do not use powders because there is a risk that she may inhale the fine powder. At first, bath time may be a little tricky, but eventually it will become an enjoyable part of your routine.